Hi everyone, welcome to the backyard art school. So we've just had a week off and I'm just walking around Barangaroo having a look at some local exhibitions uh, which I'll be showing next week. Uh, the exhibition I went to see today uh, is the other art fair so you'll see that video next week. Uh, but I just want to share with you that this week we're starting our sculpture classes and for this week I'm going to be showing you a video, a demonstration of how I teach my students uh, sculpture uh, by drawing an animal and then also creating a three-dimensional um, design for that specific sculpture to size of what they're going to create. So this is just going to give you a little snippet, a little insight of how I teach and I hope you enjoy this and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. If we're creating a sculpture of our cat, we need to create a drawing that reflects both the front and the side of the cat. So you know what it looks like on both the front and the side um, from your design drawings. So to start off, we need a piece of A4 paper. And this, shape, um, this sheet of A4 paper is going to be the same width as the base that you're going to be uh, creating a sculpture on. So have a look, see the base? It fits along there. That will be the side profile that the cat needs to um, fit onto. Next, um, also the front profile, it fits onto the front area. So just imagine that is going to be from the front and then that's going to be the side. So with this piece of paper, what I'd like you to do is just slip it behind your sheet to start off with, just with the folding process. And make sure that it's nice and aligned at the base. Then at the top, I want you to fold it so it's right down following that side crease that you have there already put both your top finger and your bottom your thumb at the base and then you just run your finger across and fold it so we are now going to turn this piece of paper over and have it hooking on top of your other drawing and you can bring it as close as you want to your actual uh, cat drawing now at this point we um can use a ruler if you wish so it will help or just some something that has a nice hard edge that you can just rule a line across you won't be using the numbers and the ruler to measure with you are just going to be um, using each of the areas of your cat going across so we're in a way doing a technical drawing of your cat so to start off with let's have a look we're going to make sure that the width from the top of the page to your ruler is the same okay on both sides that's all I have do by eye that's fine so from the tips of the cat's ears you are going to draw a line across then from the top of its head again just check the width make sure it's the same here as it is along here before you rule and you go across what is the next feature that you want to? Okay, I'm going to choose um, the nose, the top of the nose, okay, or the top of the muzzle would be a good place. And then again, make sure the width here is the same, push up a little bit longer, and then just draw across the bottom of the head. So again, try and keep it so the width here is the same visually as the width along here. So it's not like crooking up or crooking down. So make sure that's the same and just draw a light line going across so yeah we're going to look at the chest area and we are going to go across make sure that the width is the same and what is the next point of reference i would say the the top of the feet okay so the top of the feet will be the next point of reference when you come to the bottom area, maybe use the bottom edge as your guide for the line. And there we have it. 
So now we're going to start by drawing a side view of the cat. Now, as I said before, it is a good idea to have some sort of photograph just so you can see what the side view of a cat may look like. And as you can see, if you're looking at this cat, it is its face is forward facing, which is okay. I've got another photo which I'll show you, which is a side view. But to start off with, we are going to just do a round ball for the head. Don't worry about the facial features or the ears at the moment. Then we're going to be following, see how the chest goes out and then it goes in. Okay, so that chest area, we've got this curve. So that's really important to follow. Okay, and it comes all the way down here. Then we also have this thigh curve. But before we do the thigh curve, we are going to look at the thickness. Obviously, you've got the head, then the thickness of the um, neck is the same as the head. Then you have the back. So it goes pretty much like a tabletop and then it curves down to where the bottom is. And that's where you're, you're going to have the, the back of the cat. Uh, you'll have a little lump area where the tail is. It'll be wrapped around the other side. And then we also have this curve for the thigh. And then we also have this, see the foot coming down, it's quite long. And then this foot here, we've got one paw that's going up and one down. I would suggest just to keep both legs going straight down, especially when you're doing a sculpture. It's very hard to do a leg like this coming out in clay because it would snap off it during the drying process. So best to keep it close to the body as much as possible. So to start off with, I'm going to draw the head and the head area, can you see? The top of the head is here and the bottom of the head is there. Now the width of the head, I think would be quite similar. So it's really important just to draw, start off with the drawing, just a round ball. You can refine it a little bit more later on, but let's just start off with a ball shape, okay? Next, we've got the neck, obviously, of the cat coming down on both sides. And remember, the thickness of the neck is pretty much the same thickness as the head. So you see with the thickness of the head, the only difference is, is where it finishes where the chest area is, it does actually curve. So have a look, I'm going down, 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 and then I curve, and then I stop, just when I hit to that chesty area before the legs, okay? Then we'll start to work on the other side. So have a look, you've got the thickness of the neck, and it's the same, it's similar thickness to the head. You go down, but then when it gets to the back area, which is pretty much just after the neck, you've got this table kind of top, you see, shape. So I'm going to go, and you can refine this bit. I'm gonna go across, but then I'm going to be curving. Can you see how I'm curving down? So I'm going across, just in the other hand, and I'm going to follow the drawing as I look at it. Curve, 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 and down. There we go. Okay. So now we've got the chest, we've got the back of the cat. We are going to now work on the legs. And as I said before, I would prefer to start maybe on the foot here. So you can see it comes up to that chest area. So this top of the chest, the thigh starts up here. And this is where you start to work out, okay, where is the thigh, where the neck is. So it's pretty much the, where the, the, um, the neckline is here. So make sure that you have that curve of the thigh. And it's always looking at comparisons of other things of the body that you're comparing to. Where, it, where does this thigh come across to? And see how, I, even a little bit more forward than that. So let me just go a bit more forward. Yeah. There we go. And then he's got his foot and you can see the foot come out from under its thigh. And it's quite long, but can you see where it finishes? So you've got this foot, comes a little bit further out than the thigh. Okay, but the back of it is quite long. So that's where I'm going to go with that. Now, any sketchy lines that you've got where you've got too many, just clean them up as you go. Clean up as you go with those lines. So it doesn't get confused with which one is right. Now we have the shoulder of the cat. So have a look. So it's not much too much of a shoulder. His, his paw is up, but I, as I said before, I'm going to keep the legs going straight down. Uh, the reason is, is because if we're doing the sculpture of this cat,
we need to have yeah foot there cat paw and then going across okay so you can just do a little paw there there we go so now we've got legs the foot not too big okay we've got the tail which will be a lump and then it'll be wrapping around the front and you might just see the tail coming around there's a round thing there there we go okay now we're coming to the head so have a look at the head you have a choice at this point okay if you wanted to have your cat so it's side facing like this one where you've got the head turning this way you can draw the face exactly the same as what you've just done before onto that head with the ears and everything facing that way you could have it at a bit of a slant if you wanted to so have a look you could change it so your cat head is at a bit of a slant but if you are doing that you need to make sure that your eye line is at a slant can you see what i'm saying so for example eye line is here you'll have to go through that whole process of drawing the eyes cat You do everything, but if it's on a side slant, you need to have the same, like do it at an angle, okay? To have that pose, all right? Okay, but if you're wanting to have it so that your cat is facing forward, I will show you how to do that next. So now we're going to have a look at the side profile of the cat. And what you'll notice is they don't have a really large muzzle like some of the dog breeds do. Uh, they've got this brow that comes across. You've got a little bit of a brow, but then you've got the nose that comes at downward slant, then the muzzle that comes back. You then have the chin, and also the neck coming down. So this is what we're going to start off with. From the top of the head, I would go so that the back of the, the back and the back of the head goes up at an angle. Then you come around. We're looking at this brow a little bit. So let's have a look, not too much of a brow, just a little bit. When it comes to the nose point, so you've got this nose here, yeah? You wanna go down to where the nose is, just a little bit. Then you have the tip of the nose. I'll just bring this line down so it's the same alignment. Yeah, to the tip of the nose. And then you actually have an angle where it goes back towards where the top of the muzzle is here. And then you've also got a bit of the, the chin, but it's mostly just one shape going back okay and then just a little bit pull it back a little bit more where the neck is so you've got the chest going up to the neck and then it goes up to the chin okay so it's very slight it's not as um as big as on the dog breeds are with the ears as well so you're looking at the ear the height of the ear so yeah the ears will be coming up and forward okay and it goes below the headline the top of the headline okay and that's the ear coming around there we go now the eyes so we've got the eyes here so you could from the brow area just have the side profile of the eye a little bit but it's not gonna to be too much. So the side profile, it's not gonna be like the whole eye like this. You just do a little line like that and then you go in with the, the um, eyeball, the side profile, and that's all you need. The nose, so we've got the nose here, so let's have a look. You've got your nose, the side view of the nose, tiny, yeah? So it's only a little nose, mouth, coming back up chin not too big with the mouth only make it little and then you have obviously the whiskers and so forth okay and that's it for the face so this is a really great 
drawing, um, technical drawing for you to start your sculpture. You have a very clear view of what your front view of the cat looks like. And you also know exactly how big your um, the back of the cat is. Uh, this is also going to fit on your base, so it works well. And forward facing. So as a technical drawing or a design of your cat for a sculpture, this will give you all the information that you need to progress with your sculpture. Now, if you are looking at your furrier option for a cat, like this one, all I want you to do is do the similar thing that we did with the fur before. So look at how much thickness, how much more hair is that? And that's what you can add on with this drawing is to bulk it out. And then what you'll be doing is you'll be then working in the texture. So what I mean by that is you'll be then doing areas where you might have the fur texture showing through, um, showing the long hair of the cat and you'll be um, fleshing that out using tools, okay? So you might just have a bit of this textural sort of element that you can draw on wherever you like. And obviously just rub out the inside area of your cat. The last thing that you'll need to do is when you're building this sculpture in clay, it's going to be really important to understand um, that you can't have this as solid clay. It needs to have a core fit inside of it. Otherwise, the drying process, what will happen is it will dry out and um, the interior of it will be so full of water still that the surface area will dry out faster and it will crack. So to have a more even drying process, it's really important to have a core inside. Now just dot this core in. Usually it's about the width of two fingers um, at least. Don't go any thinner than that uh, with the clay. And you will need to have that core inside of your cat. It will be created by scrunching up newspaper this head area is okay, but just as long as you don't have, you know, this massive solid um, hunk of clay right in the middle here, because it will risk, depending on how fast it uh, dries, it will risk cracking. Uh, so the, the front view of that would obviously be, so it'd be like to the chest point here. And yeah, as long as you've got, so it'd be like a, um, a, a narrow, sort of oval shape that you'll be making out of the paper. And it's really important to sort of measure that as well when you are sculpting. I'll just dot this in now. You don't necessarily need to do this now. You can do it later when we get to the sculpture component, but it is good to be able to measure this when you're scrunching up the paper and measuring, making sure it fits in there, and then you're building off. So really this is the template for when you're building your sculpture.